Hello, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us for our webinar uh, in best practices in choosing hardware technology partners for your workplace service delivery implementation. This webinar is brought to you by ServiceNow WSD, along with our amazing tech partners. Um, before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. So first and foremost, we have our safe harbor notice. And basically what this means is that what we are presenting today is in our roadmap. However, this is subject to change. If you're interested in joining any of our future webinars uh, that are coming up, please do scan this QR code that you see on the screen right now where you are gonna be able to see uh, the schedule. It's all gonna be on Live on ServiceNow platform. As I mentioned, some of the housekeeping items, uh, we have saved time at the end of this webinar for some Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout uh, our, our session, please do use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen along the way. Uh, this presentation is also going to be recorded and shared on the ServiceNow community. And after the event, you will be prompted to fill out a survey. So we do appreciate you taking the time to, to fill it out and, and providing us with your feedback. Now, let's talk about what all are we going to be covering today. We're going to get started with some welcome and introductions. We're going to see who's in the room, who are our speakers. Then we're going to move on to an overview of the workplace service delivery product. We're going to talk about our user journey and how it connects to each one of our tech partners joining us today. Then our tech partners are going to do a presentation of their own. Uh, we're going to get started with Embrava, followed by Idea. Then we'll have BirchSense and lastly, Metricus. And after our tech partners are done presenting, we're going to do a user journey demo just to connect everything that we are discussing throughout this webinar. And as promised, at the end, we're going to have a key for all the questions that you might have. So moving on to uh, who's in the room, we have Brad Fisher, Brad Sullivan, and myself from ServiceNow. We also have Cameron joining us from Embrava, Kirsten from BirchSense. Uh, we have Meg, Meg from Metricus, and we have both Clyde and Sabrina joining us from IDEA. I'll now pass it down to Brett uh, to talk about a brief introduction of workplace service delivery. Thanks, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, just in, in transparency, I got to, I, from Comcast, this, my internet was out, so I'm on my hotspot. So if uh, if it cuts out, just please please let me know and I will um, I'll hopefully get that fixed. So. Um, thank you all for joining today, and thanks, Paulina, for um, for that great introduction. Um, we're going to talk a lot about capabilities that are both GA and also a little bit about roadmap. Um, most of what you're going to see today exists in the product, and um, so we're super excited about um, showing you the integrated ecosystem of technology partners. Um, so I think most of you all have background on WSD, either because you're a partner or a customer, um, and uh, we may have some, some uh, prospects on the phone as well, um, but... Um, so, so in that case, we think about WSD in kind of two different perspectives. Um, on the left, you see um, a vision of WSD for employees. Um, we look at ourselves as a market-leading employee experience application for the workplace. So whether it's reservations or case or visit or workplace concierge or any of our market-leading um, employee-facing capabilities, we do have a of um, uh, you know, um, uh, capabilities in that domain. Then in addition to that, um, we also have some capabilities uh, from a um, operational or um, administrative perspective um, that would compete in what we, we would call the IBMS or um, integrated workplace management segment. So whether it is space planning or workplace operations and facility management um, or workplace services, um, and again, we'll Seems like we lost Brett there for a second. Hey, Paulina, while we wait for Brett to come back, I'll just um, chime in and try and pick up where he left off and hopefully we hear his voice in a second. But um, yeah, this slide is just a representation of 
two dimensions of workplace service delivery. On one side, it's really transforming the employee experience with reservations, case, visitor, and so much more. And then on the other side, it's really helping to inject efficiencies into the workplace for those workplace leaders in terms of how they plan space, how they fulfill those services, how they deliver those services, and how they um, manage workplace operations in general. Yeah, hey Maria, I'm back. I I apologize. Uh, as I as I mentioned, I think at the beginning of the discussion, my my uh, ISP decided to do maintenance today on on our uh, lines, and so I've been hot spotting all morning. And it seems like this is the first time, of course, in the middle of a webinar that it stopped working. <laughs> You're good. Um, okay. Um, I guess perfect segue to the next slide. Um, so when you think about our product suite. Um, We've been growing the application portfolio pretty substantially. Um, and, and like I said, we look at ourselves as a market leading employee experience application. So whether it's reservations or visitor or case or FM um, or our workplace concierge capabilities, which um, are kind of market leading, especially when it comes to the hybrid workplace, um, as well as um, our um, you know, administrative capabilities. So whether it's space management or move management or lease or maintenance um, and sort of competing in that IWMS segment, we, we look at ourselves as um, a market leader there. But what's really interesting is that third, third segment on the right, the smart building integrations. So we've launched an application called Workplace Connectors, which you may be familiar with, which enables the integration with IoT devices, um, as well as um, our, um, our space, mapping, uh, space mapping capabilities from a smart buildings perspective. Um, and that's obviously all coupled with the ServiceNow platform. Um, so we're thrilled about the capabilities that we've got from this domain. Um, let's jump into the next slide. Um, so I want you to envision the, um, you know, a day in the life of an employee. Um, so I get up in the morning, I decide that I want to go into the office. Um, I plan my hybrid routine. My phone nudges me that I regularly collaborate with Sally and Sue. They're in the office. Um, maybe I'd like to book a desk next to them. I arrive in the office and I receive, um, uh, you know, a notification that a desk has been booked for me, maybe in an area that is a little warmer because I like to work in a warm area or quieter area. Um, I'm then notified when it's time to go to my first meeting of turn by turn instructions, maybe because I'm from out of town. Um, the meeting room is optimized uh, for both in-person and remote attendees. The team's meeting is up, um, you know, et cetera. And then, um, uh, I, you know, there's a happy hour in the office and I'm notified on, um, on, you know, how to get to or that there's a happy hour in the office later in the afternoon. Um, and so this is our vision of what the employee experience looks like um, in, in uh, you know, in sort of the, the day to day journey of an employee. But in order to enable this employee experience, um, it's important um, to realize that there's lots of different hardware and software that goes behind this. So. As, as part of that, um, there are platforms and systems, whether it's um, IoT devices or building management systems or security systems that the, the ecosystem has to integrate with, which is then enabled by infrastructure um, to manage the assets and um, uh, building assets like the, the, um, the HVAC units and uh, whatnot. And then behind all of that is the buildings um, themselves that we're integrating with. And so it's important to understand that we integrate with the entire depth of the smart building in order to enable those types of experiences. And that's very much um, where we're headed as a product as well. And so we're super, super excited about our technology partners. Um, we've launched an ecosystem. And so whether it's um, our collaboration tools with Microsoft and, and Google, digital signage platforms, and we're thrilled to have both Embrava and IDEA here today. Um, from a smart building and sensor perspective, we've got a host of, um, of integration partners. Some of these are um, earlier in the discussion than others, but Metricus is here today and um, VergeSense is here today. And then we've got a host of other technology partners as well. Um, there's some exciting announcements coming with a couple of these um, in the next couple of weeks also um, that you should stay tuned to, um, to, to our LinkedIn and other um, uh, you know, sort of social platforms to, to hear about. 
Um, and actually, we're, we're going to make an announcement later today as well with, with IDEA, um, which has just launched their application in the App Store, which is, um, th you know, we're, we're thrilled to, to, um, to be able to announce. Um, I think, Sabrina, you're going to probably talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But, um, but yeah, lots of, exciting, um, lots of exciting news to report in our smart building ecosystem. And just maybe just one more data point on this. Um, our, our vision is that we'll have plug and play integrations with a host of integration partners. Um, you can also go through Metricus, which is, um, and again, I'll let the Metricus team talk about their capabilities in just a minute. Um, and then if your integration partner isn't on this list, um, you can also build a point to point integration with ServiceNow. So it's not like we're saying that you can only integrate with these software providers or these uh, uh, software and hardware providers, um, but this is just one option um, for a plug and play integration. Now you can go to the next slide. Cool. Um, so I want to take you through an employee journey, and then I think we're going to pass it off to the uh, partners for a little bit more um, of, a, of a deep dive. Um, so number one, um, uh, think about, you, you know, you're planning a visit to the headquarters on a Tuesday, um, and your home office is in a different location. Um, so you make a reservation via the employee portal, um, and you make that reservation for near where your colleagues are sitting. Um, you looked at the president's dashboard and understood that your colleague Bree is coming into the office um, on, on Tuesday. So, uh, so Bree actually uh, changes her office day um, to, to that day, which is exciting. Um, she didn't reserve a seat, so she arrives at the office and then um, notices that there's a handful of, of seats remaining um, and, uh, and used the Embrava puck to reserve, to scan her badge up against it and then reserve the seat. Um, then um, looked at the workplace portal uh, to find real-time availability of a conference room. Um, it's a busy day in the office, but, um, but uh, Verge Sense detected that there was maybe a conference room that, that uh, wasn't reserved um, or was reserved, but maybe somebody didn't show up to, um, and they were able to reserve that using WSD. Um, and then after lunch, um, you noticed that, um, uh, that you, you needed a whiteboard session um, and so you found a meeting space with the IDEA door panel um, and booked it for, for 2 p.m. Um, that automatically synced back with WSD. Um, and then, um, uh, of course, at the end of the day, um, it's time to get a summary of the facilities data. And so um, uh, Nina, the facility manager, was able to um, pull a report of the building data for that day. Um, so end-to-end -end technology ecosystem using our four technology partners we're showcasing today. Um, and I think we're about to jump into a demo showcasing this capability. Thank you so much, Brett. We're gonna pass it down to Embrava now to walk us through their solution. And then once all of our tech partners are done sharing their portions, we're gonna do a demo that shows how we all come together. Amazing, thank you. Hi, I'm Cameron Gagne. I'm the marketing director at Embrava. And we are a work tech company that makes flexible work work. Uh, we're so excited to be here today. So I just want to thank Paulina and Brett and Brad and the ServiceNow WSD team for having us. Um, so we can jump right in to our next slide. Awesome. So what do we offer? Um, as was discussed, uh, Bree can walk into the office and find an Embrava desk sign sitting at a workspace. So the Embrava desk sign is pictured here on your screen. It is a sleek hardware device for hot desks or flexible workspaces. We also see folks use Embrava desk signs on any bookable space in a flexible office. So that includes things like meeting rooms or phone booths, mother's rooms, et cetera. Any space that you're managing within WSD would be appropriate for an Embrava desk sign. So on top of the desk sign is an LED light and it changes color to display the status of the workspace. So the colors I'm gonna walk through are really just how we see most customers use the desk sign, but they're actually completely customizable. We support a full 256 RGB color range on that LED light. So you can do branded coloring or um, neighborhood coloring, et cetera. So that's all customizable. Um, but how we see most customers use it is to use a green light for an available workspace. Green means go. It's really easy to look across the whole office floor and see exactly where available workspace is that I can just walk up to and book on the spot. Now, if I did book in advance um, through WSD, 
the color on top of the desk sign could be yellow. And then on the screen that is on the front of the desk sign, my name will actually also appear. So I can see exactly which specific workspace I used. It's really easy to find that booked space. Um, because I can see my name right on the front of it. It's also a great way to prevent other folks from sitting at a space that I have already booked. Now, once I go up to the desk sign, I can check into it using an RFID badge or a touch screen or a QR code. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But once I do check in, um, the sign will become red and it will display my name as you see on the screen for the duration of my booking. So that digital name plating is a really important part of flexible work. We know that it's difficult in hybrid and flexible workspaces where people are working at different spaces every day. Um, it's difficult to give them name plating in the office. Name plating allows employees to feel ownership over their workspace, even though it's flexible, even though I'm only coming in two or three days a week, I still want to feel a little bit of ownership over my space. Um, it also helps everyone else in the office get to know each other. You know, it's super common today that maybe I've worked with someone over email for the last however many years, but I might never have met them in person. Um, digital name plating takes away that sort of guesswork and helps reduce the friction in a flexible workspace. Now, at the end of my booking, I can scan out. Um, I can scan out of the desk sign, and this is an optional state that can display, but a requires cleaning status can be displayed here. The light could be purple. The front of the sign says requires cleaning, and that can actually automatically send a work order right to facilities so they know exactly which workspaces were actually used, and they make sure every workspace that was used is being cleaned. So they're not wasting resources cleaning the entire floor. Um, it's a super great feature that can work right through ServiceNow WSD. Now, as I said, the front of the screen has a touch screen. It displays the employee's name for the duration of their booking. That also prevents folks from sitting down. If I go take a lunch or a meeting, I don't have to like leave a handwritten note that says I'm still working or arrange my stuff in a way that makes it very clear that I'm like working at the desk. The desk sign can do that for you. Um, as I said, too, we support on the spot booking um, so I can walk right up to a, a green desk sign, scan an RFID badge that I'm already using to get in and out of the building. Really, really easy to interact with the Imbrava desk sign. I can also scan a QR code if that's more comfortable on my own device, and then I can pull up the mobile version of WSD and make sure that I'm booked in. Um, or I can use the touch screen to check in as well. So we know that having a desk level device uh, reduces friction by making available space easy to find and it creates predictability in the office. So this is sort of part of a larger conversation around employee experience, right? We talk a lot about it, but like, why is that important? I think it's important to give employees the technology that they actually need in the office because it creates an ease and um, a predictability. It creates a sense of trust that I know that if I'm going into the office, I'm not gonna be asked to have uncomfortable conversations with my colleagues. I'm not gonna walk up to space that I booked and lo and behold, it's not available. I know that I can trust the mapping that's in WSD because it's actually reflecting what's really happening in the office. So it creates this holistic sense of it being pleasant and predictable and enjoyable to walk into the office um, and use flexible workspace. And as we said as well, the digital name plating allows employees to feel ownership over their workspace. So that again, contributes to a positive employee experience, even in flexible workspaces. And now we can move right to the next slide. We're gonna talk about how we work with WSD. So we are integrating seamlessly with WSD. That means that there is a constant real-time communication between the Imbrava desk, desk sign and the WSD interface. Um, so that means anything that I do in WSD is going to live update on Imbrava desk signs throughout the workspace. And it means anything that I do on the desk sign will also live update in WSD. The desk signs are mapped to the workspaces that correspond with the WSD mapping. That is a one-time process that happens with implementation. We map the desk signs to the workspaces exactly as they are in WSD. And then again, we support in advance and on-the-spot reservations and bookings. And then as I mentioned, any bookable workspace being managed in WSD is right for an Imbrava desk sign. And that again includes meeting rooms, phone booths, focus rooms, mother's rooms, et cetera. 
Uh, the Imbrava desk sign devices are remotely configured and managed through the Imbrava DMS. So this is the one time that you would need to exit ServiceNow WSD in order to do live updates on all of the Imbrava desk signs. That's where you can configure the colors to be whatever you'd like them to be. Um, so they're all remotely managed and it's super easy. That means that we don't have to walk up to every single desk sign to run updates. Um, they're also all hard powered, uh, which means that updates can happen really simply and none of the desk signs need to be charged because on a larger implementation, that would be really challenging. Um, so we're solving that for you. So now I'd love to tell you about a case study. We can move right to the next slide. This is an example of our incredible partnership in action today. So you may have noticed the NBA logo. That's because the National Basketball Association is a customer of both ServiceNow WSD and the Imbrava desk sign. So when they came to us, they had WSD implemented and they had a booking policy. They're asking their flexible work employees to book space in advance. Um, whether that's a specific desk or a meeting room or a conference space. Their pain, though, came from a low compliance of that space booking policy. So even though they were asking employees to use WSD, only some employees were using it. And that meant that it was very common that if a space was booked, um, in advance, someone would walk up to that space and lo and behold, there would be a bunch of folks in the meeting room or sitting at a desk. And that equates to wasted time and money. So I'm gonna walk you through it really quick. When that happens, it is a lose-lose for everyone because whether I decide that I'm going to like confront the people who are sitting in the meeting space and interrupt their meeting, Let's say I do that, right? So now those folks are displaced and they now have to find new available workspace. Let's say I'm not feeling confrontational today. I don't wanna do that. So I'm not gonna interrupt their meeting, but now it's incumbent on me to go find available workspace and I'm just wasting time. What the NBA found, they estimated that through their um, approximately 1,000 employees, they decided that those employees were wasting approximately 10.8 hours each annually, which equated to an estimated $712,800 wasted annually. <laughs> That's a huge sum of money just wasted in not having available workspace, having to walk around the office, having uncomfortable conversations, it increases friction, it's unpleasant for the people who have to interact that way. And what the um, NBA found was that it was a huge uh, money waster. So why did they choose the Imbrava desk sign? There's lots of different ways to address this. Um, obviously we believe that the Imbrava desk sign is a good one um, to pair with your WSD. And what the NBA found specifically was that it saves time and it's easy to use and it improves accuracy. So as I mentioned, we have a variety of check-in methods. Employees can use the RFID badge they are already using to get in and out of the building. Super easy, check into the desk sign, boom, one and done, I booked the space. Um, it improves accuracy. So here is where we talk about accurate workplace usage data. We touched a little bit on this um, about how valuable that is. It empowers leaders to make, to make important decisions about real estate, about the future of work in their office, but they're not doing that using just what employees say they're gonna do. They're actually able to use data about what employees are actually doing in the workplace. It's trackable, the data is better. It's a super rich data set. It also includes what types of um, departments are working together, uh, what type of work is being done collaboratively in the office versus what type of work is better done at home. Um, using something, a device at the desk that allows employees to check in and out really gives you that accurate data set. And as we said, it's super easy to use. So what happened since they implemented um, WSD plus the Imbrava desk sign? Well, the NBA saw an increased adoption of WSD. They saw that their compliance increased. The space booking policy was followed much more regularly and accurate workplace usage data was gathered. Um, it continues to be a successful implementation today. And uh, with that, I am so grateful to be here. If you have any questions about the Imbrava desk sign, as was mentioned earlier, please put those questions in the chat, use the Q&A feature, and we'd be happy to get to them at the end of the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Cameron. That was really interesting. Um, now I'm gonna pass it down to Idea. Thanks, Belina. And I'm gonna request the control uh, of the screen if that's okay. Absolutely, there you go.
appreciate that. And yeah, hi everyone, it's Sabrina here, uh, the marketing director of uh, IDEA. Um, I, here we go. So I have some uh, cute animation here I like to share. <laughs> So for the over 20 years, a little bit about IDEA ourselves. Uh, for more than 20 years, IDEA has been dedicated um, to develop workspace management display solution that we hope can enhance the user experience and boost productivity of your office. Um, here's an overview on our product ranging. Um, so starting from the wayfinding kiosk, as well as the registration kiosk at the entrance of the office, uh, we also have media play player that help with the corporate communication, a variety of desk booking and a desk hoteling um, solution here to help you to book the hotel space or to support a desk hotel setup. Our flagship product, it's obviously our 10 inch and 15 inch room booking panel, which can be integrated with the sensors and also the door lock, the sensor that VergeSense provided um, for people counting and check-in, check-out and door lock for advanced auto mentions. So the majority of our customer are actually enterprise clients worthwhile. And we of course take our information security very seriously by holding the ISO 27001 certificate. And we're also the only HID card reader um, certified partners uh, for room panel in the market right now. Um, additionally, all our device can be remotely monitored and managed via our idea care platform, uh, which is a remote device management solutions, creating a hustle free smart workplace uh, for your office. And as for today, um, like Brad mentioned earlier, we are very happy that we can announce uh, the idea's latest integration with ServiceNow WSD, focus on the room booking solution, as you can see uh, from the photo here. So this panels with surrounding LED status lights actually allow you to do uh, instant on-site booking and also status check, delivering a very seamless and also frictionless um, room reservation experience. So before we introduce the solution, I wanted to slightly engage with our audience here uh, today. So feel free to type yes or just give me a, a little thumb up uh, later on on my questions. So I wanted to ask, um, have you ever walked into a meeting room you book and only to find out that it's already occupied or even worse? being interrupted during a call or a meeting and by someone asking how much longer will you be needing the room? So basically through the customer interview, um, we've discuss discovered that the room, oh, I'm happy to see lots of uh, thumbing up here, <laughs> which means there's uh, something that we can fix together. So through our customer interview, we discovered that the room reservation solution with a room panels, a hardware integration, are often more successful. And why is that? So we kind of need to admit that people can be lazy, right? When it comes to uh, booking a room in advance. So from time to time, I just need to get on a 10 minutes call and I find a meeting room. I tend to just you know jump in and just start my call. But um, 10 sometimes become 30 minutes and sometimes it becomes an hour call. And when people who actually reserve the space arrive, they might find out that someone is already using the meeting room they book and will eventually lose trust over the system. So a meeting room panel outside of each meeting space actually enforce the message of you need to book a room to use it, right? The meeting room panel display uh, the current meeting room schedule uh, that is directly synced from the ServiceNow WSD. With the surrounding alley, the status light, anyone can see from a glance if the room is in use, preventing interruption or any confusion. So the second question uh, issue that we can also address uh, and also solve with the room panel integration is the ghost booking or some someone called ghost meeting uh, situation here, where a room is reserved but remain unused, um, become a waste of the space. So with the idea and service down integration, uh, the room can be automatically released in a set period of time if no one check into their reservation. And this will release the space and allowing others to use the space and improving, of course, the overall room utilization. So now, um, as we understand the, uh, the two common challenge that can be solved from uh, the room panels, uh, why choosing ServiceNow Plus uh, idea room panels, right? So I wanted to just highlight a few key points here. 
First is that it can connect it with your existing uh, calendar, no matter it's an Outlook calendar or a Google calendar. And once the connection is done uh, with instant booking and real-time information display, this panel will be able to streamline the check-in process for your employee. And later on, my colleague uh, Clyde will actually do a quick demo so you can see this in, in, in live, in real actions. And also with our open platform, uh, it also allow future integration with sensor like a uh, sense providing for people counting for CO2. And also through Metricus, this will offer data on our room panels and uh, will allow user to help user to choose the best meeting space that they need. Uh, third is that it will streamline the deployment with the integration and, and partnership with, we have with ServiceNow. We'll be able to preload the solution in our panel and deliver it to our customer as one package. Last thing I wanted to highlight, but it's also the most important one, is um, when you want it, when you pick a room panel for your office, you always want it to go with an enterprise grade panel that powered by PoE instead of a battery. I actually recently host a roundtable about two weeks ago. Um, it's about hardware integration. And I surprisingly noticed that there are still around 60% of my attendees. They still do not know that a consumer tablet, uh, like an iPad or, or an Android, Android temp tablet, can cause fire hazard for, for their office. So I actually have a real case a study that I can share with you on my next slide. Here we go. So uh, this is one of our clients that we have with uh, ServiceNow WSD. So it's a global leader in professional service with uh, around two, uh, 400 of building and over 42,000 of meter worldwide. So they reach out to us very urgently to uh, help us to re to ask us for help to replace the iPad, iPad they use for room booking for after one year of, of usage. From the picture that um, I'm putting on our uh, slide here, you can see that battery was falling as they were not designed to be charged 24 seven. So with that, and also at the stage of transition from a traditional office to a smart, smart office setup that require a better check-in experience to increase the utilization rate of their office and also for the whole system. We were able to fulfill all their requirements as well as the security request and help them swap out a thousand, uh, more than thousands of panels in a short period of time with our global channels. And eventually with our solutions, uh, they reduce their general and admission, admission costs by around 40%. And we'll, we're the, able to redirect the resource from building costs and also to technology and eventually to people. So for my next uh, section, I wanted to hand it to my colleague, Clyde. Uh, we have a short demonstration on how, how this will work uh, in, in life. Um, Clyde? Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kai. I'm the product director for IDEA. Uh, so, uh, Paulina, would you mind to stop sharing the uh, the presentation so I can have my the camera show up? Okay, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Sabrina, for the great introduction. And uh, in today's demo, I will show you how IDEA panel work in real life scenario. As you can see from the camera, the panel is installed on a glass wall. So the metal bracket hold the panel securely, um, and as well as uh, hide, hide the cables uh, behind uh, the bracket so the uh, insulation can be really clean. The panel supports a power over ethernet, just like uh, Sabrina mentioned, which means you only need a single ethernet cable for both power and data. This simplifies the installation's uh, uh, process. Additionally, the Surrounding status light make it easy to see the room's uh, availability from a distance. For example, when the uh, light is green, I know the room is free. I can walk up to the panel to check if I can quickly book the space for a meeting. So for example, right now I can hit the meeting now uh, and then the set it time uh, that needs for my meetings. Since uh, the next meeting uh, is coming uh, in a few hours away, so I can book the meeting right now. And uh, as soon as I hit the book, you can see the light turns red. So, um, the uh, anyone try to book this uh this room through the ServiceNow app or the calendar will see now the meeting room is uh, reserved. 
and also people from distance will see the room is now occupied. So uh, if I finish my meeting room early or change my mind, I can easily cancel the meeting on spot as well. So if I hit cancel here, and yes. So the light changed back to the green. So quickly, I will um, also show you how that interact with the uh, ServiceNow uh, uh, WSD platform. So let me uh, share my screen here. So as you can see from the uh, uh, workplace the platform, right now there are two meetings that it's, um, uh, it's pre-scheduled to, to this, uh, this meeting room. So there's a sales meeting coming up and production meeting. If you can still see on my screen, uh, the daily schedule here uh, presents uh, the sales meeting and the production meeting. And now if I uh, book the meeting for the room and hit on book, so now the meeting is now occupied. And if I refresh my the service now, the um, uh, like a, a reservation, you will see like the room book booking, uh, this uh, reservation just populated. So the booking is, uh, in, uh, is instant and that uh, can be sh uh, show up on uh, service now like immediately. And that will reflect to your calendar app and your service now app. And finally, uh, idea panel can be remotely managed. So uh, here I showcasing uh, the idea here where uh, I, um, Sabrina just mentioned about it. Like everything can be managed remotely and you can have a quick look at uh, what is currently displayed on the screen as well as uh, changing uh, network settings, uh, renaming the names. Yeah, due to the time constraint, I can't cover all the features in this demo. I would like to, uh, like, if you would like to learn more, like, please feel free to contact the idea sales for additional information. Thank you. Yeah, so that completes my demo. And uh, uh, Paulina, you would like to uh, take back the control and I will stop Thank sharing Thank you so screen. much, Clyde, for that demo. That's amazing. I will now pass it down to Kirsten from Birchsend. Thank you so much for this, Kirsten. This is all really, really good to hear. And I'm now going to pass it down, lastly, to Max from Metricus. Thank you so much, uh, Polina. Do I have uh, the rights to change the slide? You do. Perfect. You do. Brilliant. You can go ahead. Thank you guys so much. Hi, I'm Meg Sasama. I'm Account Director at Metricus. I am super excited to be here today to talk to you about how Metricus has been transforming the chaotic world of building data. So currently, um, I think we can all agree we live in a highly connected world. We've discussed how there are a multitude of different types of sensors from occupancy, energy, environmental quality sensors and data all within the built environment. Um, and what we have found is for many workplace leaders, facilities teams, those who manage building data, it feels like a costly and is a time consuming process uh, to try and understand what's happening within the built environment. And this predominantly is down to the data being quite scattered and siloed, um, which ultimately slows down decision making. It makes it harder for facilities teams to identify issues and ultimately it prevents these teams from solving daily challenges. So this is where Metricus comes in. So we provide clear, unified, and accessible data. We do this by acting as the glue for your building data. So whatever the data is uh, provided from a trusted source, we can aggregate that data, bringing, in, bringing it into the Metricus application. We just don't gather the data as well. One of our uh, key outputs is that we normalize the data. That means we standardize it and make it compatible for you to use the data seamlessly. And all of this data is available through the ServiceNow application as a single point of integration for us. So this means that you don't have to be jumping into different applications. You don't have to be looking through different interfaces, whether it's your BMS data or occupancy data, everything is funneled through Metricus and then pushed out into the WSD application. So we help uh, tackle a number of key challenges across the user journey. Um, a couple of them are uh, listed here. So we've got uh, getting people back into the workplace. So we can help do this by providing insights into occupancy levels, overlaying that with environmental quality as well. And this can help support a smooth and safe transition back to the workplace. Another thing we hear quite a bit is around how you can use data to optimize space and building efficiency. So we can do this uh, one or two ways. You can look at historical data or you can look at real-time data. 
through Metricus on the WSD application. And with this data, you can make some informed decisions on how to maximize building efficiency, how you can optimize space usage, and also how you can reduce costs and reduce your impact on the environment. And then lastly, we've got improving workplace experience for visitors and also employees. So being able to visualize data, whether it's on uh, kiosk views or um, in digital display units or on handheld devices, being able to choose spaces that best suits your needs. Uh, this is all coming from data around the indoor air quality and what's happening in the space. Um, and this can be pushed through to WSD. But we can also look to automate uh, things as well. So when temperature reaches a certain threshold, you can look to make changes to the building management system or even looking at occupancy data um, when CO2 reaches a certain threshold to look at uh, prohibiting users from booking certain rooms as well. So just to go into the next slide. One of Metricus's strengths is around flexibility. So we make building data available in any form that suits you. So we've got three key areas and three ways that we push data out of Metricus. So we have live data. So this gives you the ability to look at real time, occupancy, air quality, or any live data feed that's coming through Metricus. And that makes it possible to start making immediate adjustments to spaces or um, uh, adjustments to air quality as well. You can also get historical data through Metricus. So that means you can start to analyze uh, patterns, look for opportunities to either lower energy consumption, to improve on your carbon emissions, uh, and do much more with the historical data provided through, through Metricus in WSD. And then lastly, we also provide accelerated insights. So this is uh, endpoints from our API that gives you uh, a clear view on things like unused desks and the cost impact of unused desks. So you can get powerful analytics through Metricus in this way as well. So ideally, whether you're looking at office redesign, you're uh, setting sustainability goals or enhancing workplace experience, Metricus will provide you the data and the insights in the format that you want it. And we do that through uh, through WSD. So we wanted just to show, I guess, a, a, an image of just a sheer amount of different data sources that can come through Metricus. Um, I've mentioned a couple of these already, but you can also get existing infrastructure, such as your networking. Um, if you have um, video uh, conferencing equipment that can detect occupancy, we can pull all of that through Metricus as well, um, that and that can also be surfaced on ServiceNow. So this means that we're able to be involved at every stage of the user journey. So we want to just give a couple of examples of some of the use cases that's been discussed today as well. So live data, so you can display live occupancy data at the time of booking. So this can be data coming through Metricus, um, whether it's from uh, sensors or existing uh, systems in the, the room itself. And this can mean that uh, employees don't have to enter a room that's already occupied. It greatly reduces uh, challenges uh, that's been discussed earlier today as well. Historical data is uh, another, uh, another way, so by analyzing occupancy and energy data over time. And we see these as some low hanging fruits um, because if you can start to look at correlations between uh, energy and occupancy, you can start to spot times where there are energy spikes unnecessarily. So if no one's in the building, but yet your HVAC system is running, or um, there are things operating when they shouldn't be operating out of hours, or when no one is there, that could allow you to make adjustments to lower both your costs um, and also reduce your carbon footprint. And then last, we've got the accelerated insights. So this is through our API. Um, you can look at understanding what spaces are underutilized. And these insights are invaluable if you're looking to reallocate space, adjust office layouts, or even looking at scaling back on real estate costs. You can do all of that using our uh, accelerated insights. So these are just some of the examples that we have on um, on on service uh, service now using data powered through Metricus's application. And uh, we have completed a recently a demo alongside service now. So if you're interested, please do uh, look out for that. Okay. Well
Bye, Thanks, Petit. Meg. No worries. Thank you for that. I'm now going to pass it to Brad, who is going to walk us through a demo of our user journey. So let me go ahead and stop sharing, and then I'll I'll give you the screen for you to share, Brad. All right. Thank you, Paulina. And thank you, everyone, for uh, uh, for being on and, and staying uh, to this point. And uh, I'm Brad Sullivan. I, uh, I'm a member of our Workplace Service Delivery Solution co Consultant team here in, in North America. And uh, what I have the pleasure of doing is kind of helping to bring it home and, and talk about how ServiceNow ties all of this together. Um, but a lot of you are probably familiar with ServiceNow, uh, but for those who, who may be new to ServiceNow, uh, we're a, a workflow, serv uh, workflow um, platform designed at making the world of work better for everybody. What is your role? How do we make it better? Uh, and really become a system of action for what you need in your day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that may be things like HR, uh, IT, uh, you know, where ServiceNow started in the IT world, uh, but even those workplace services, right? And what we're looking at here is that portal, right, that ServiceNow provides, uh, that one start shop for everybody to come in uh, for what they need. And so tying it back to what Brett showed in the beginning of this employee journey, you know, we're going to start with the idea that Joe wanted to come in uh, and Joe needs to book uh, a space. He's traveling into uh, the office of one of his teammates, Maria, and he wants to go ahead and find that space. He can come in here uh, and he can uh, come to the portal. He sees information about what's going on. Uh, he has the ability in here to come in and reserve a desk. Uh, he, we can reserve multiple things. We have the ability to reserve desks, conference rooms, lockers, parking spaces, mother's rooms, whatever you imagine. Uh, we have the ability to create reservable uh, action against that. But in this case, he says, hey, I might just want a desk, but I want to look for very something specific. I'm looking for a desk by Maria, right? So he's going to come in here. Uh, and the first thing he's going to do is say, I want to browse near Maria, right? Um, I'm not going to bother with the, uh, the place. I just want to know where is Maria sitting? I'm going to look for Maria. What day do I want to come in? We'll pick the, this upcoming Friday. And where is she sitting on Friday, right? She's either made a permanent uh, assignment in this case. You can see this is where she sits every day. Maybe it's just her reservation for that particular day. It would show that. Uh, we're going to come in. We're going to be here all day. And I'm going to search. And it's going to go ahead and update my map here and show me here. I can see there's where Maria is sitting on Friday. I can see the available spaces around here, and I'm going to go ahead and select this desk. I can see what's in that desk, but I know it's next to Maria. I'm going to go ahead and add it, book it, and uh, I can add in subjects, uh, reserve it on behalf of somebody. This will all tie into Outlook, but I'm going to go ahead uh, and see, do I need any additional services? Maybe I want lunch brought in for Maria and I that day. I could request those services from here, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and submit that res reservation. Uh, to meet with Maria and be in the office with her on that particular day. Um, as we saw in the hardware, this is going to now go out to those uh, to the different hardware. It may go to the Improbable Puck on, on, on Friday. It's going to light up and say that Joe is coming in that particular day. So now let's transition over kind of to the next person, right? So Joe's coming in. He's seeing Maria. Uh, there's another member on their team, uh, Bree, right? And so Bree's going to come in, and Bree gets to notice that Joe is coming in. Uh, and, or she hears, hears that Joe's coming in. So she is coming into the portal and maybe she wants to go to her office microsite. So as part of the portal, uh, we can have the ability to create very specific uh, office-based information. So maybe I just want to understand how uh, the information in my office is, uh, any events that are coming up, any news. Uh, I could submit requests if something is broken. I can see what's going on in the different areas. Uh, I can see the lunch menu. Again, this is the idea of what is happening in my office on this particular day uh, or, or go any particular day. Uh, and I can also see what we call our presence dashboard. So here uh, I can come in and see what days my collaborators are coming in. I might have my particular office days, right? I normally come in on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. In this case, Bree's coming in those, those particular days. Uh, but I also have my collaborators, uh, those that I, uh, that I have selected, as well as potentially uh, suggested collaborators based on uh, my interaction with, with different people. And so I can see here that on Friday, uh, we've got 100% of my collaborators are coming in. Uh, and I want to say, I don't, I'm... I don't want to be remote that day, right? I can see here the different people that are coming in that particular day. I don't want to be remote. I'm going to be in the office that day. So now I've changed my behavior and my pattern based on what other people are doing. 
Uh, and I can now pick the days that I want to come in based on what my collaborators are doing. I've gone ahead and updated that information. So now as uh, uh, Brie comes in right on that particular day, I'm gonna bring up my mobile. And so she's gonna launch the, the ServiceNow mobile app uh, as she comes in the office. And she could make a reservation here. All of that capability that we saw there is available in the mobile app. Uh, but she wants to know, hey, where is Maria uh, and, and Joe sitting today? Uh, so she knows, hey, Maria's in this particular space. We're gonna look for that spot. And that was here. And now we see this space and she wants to get directions to see where they're sitting. Now we see that exact same spot that Maria was sitting at, per, at today. She's going to get directions from that uh, first location. Maybe this is on the kiosk. I'm showing it from the mobile, but we saw the, uh, the concept of the idea kiosk that might be at the front to show me uh, and give me the ability to look up where people are sitting or see what spaces are available uh, on that particular day. Uh, but now I have directions uh, to come in here uh, to the office. Okay, um, now let's say as we're um, uh, coming in uh, and we're sitting at the desk, uh, we need a conference room, right? We, we were chatting, we decided that we need to get in and, and book a room. Let's take this conversation to room. I wanna be able to see what's available. So how do I select the conference room? I can come into uh, what we call our location directory. Uh, I could search for different people or places just like we saw in the, uh, in the mobile device. Uh, but from those verge sense sensors, I can now see available space. And I can see here, this space is, is occupied and booked, meaning somebody made a reservation, so I can't reserve it. Uh, but I can also see there's a space over here that is available, meaning nobody has reserved it, but it is occupied. So there are people camping in this space. I could reserve this space uh, if I wanted to uh, and ask those people to leave, or I could simply say, hey, there's one over here. This space would work for me. Uh, it's got enough people in it. There's nobody in it. I'm gonna go ahead and reserve this space. And now I, we can all meet over there in that, in that space for today. All right, so let's say uh, I, I go again, and we're gonna come back to, uh, to the mobile uh, as well. And as I'm coming in uh, back from lunch, uh, we had a conversation, we decided we wanna meet again, right? So I'm gonna walk up uh, past the room. I see it's available. We say, hey, let's just jump in here and have this conversation. Uh, we saw on the panels uh, that the panel could tell me what's available, what's coming up. Uh, from idea. And so we know, hey, these rooms are available. But if I don't necessarily have a panel in a particular area, I can have a QR code there for that spot. Uh, or if it's a desk, you know, and I want to come up and, and book it there from the Mbaba Puck as well, uh, I have a QR code here to, to book this. But I can simply come in here, uh, bring up my camera, let me bring my phone back up here, and I'm going to go ahead and scan that QR code. And you're going to see it's going to open up the mobile app, and it's going to take me, uh, let's see here, let me relaunch that. Here, let me try that again. Of course, live demo. Looks great. That's great. All right. We're going to go ahead and launch this. And uh, okay, we'll launch, but let me go ahead and I'll, I'll go straight to that spot. But you could, it would take me back to that exact same spot. Uh, and I can go ahead and reserve this uh, from here. So I can walk up, I can reserve the space as I see it's available. Uh, but maybe it's not a reservable space. Maybe it's the restroom or the break room or somewhere. And I can simply submit a request in here as well. So simply by scanning the QR code. Uh, not only am I occupying the space or using the space, I can now start to tie this into my maintenance. And we can see here, uh, maybe there was a, a, a leak or the room was hot or something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead, it's gonna pre-populate the space. Uh, I can add any additional e uh, information and submit that. And now it's submitted a workplace case that I can manage in uh, ServiceNow through our, our workplace case management. It's gonna send that off to my facilities team. We can also tie that into our, uh, if we're using a different facilities management or send this off to our building management uh, if they're uh, out for outsourcing our management to our, our landlords there. Okay, coming back to the portal idea, right? So we've had that experience. How do we look at this from the backend administrative perspective, right? How does all of this data start to come into our space management team so that we can start to make informed decisions? So here's an example of a dashboard uh, where we're starting to see data brought in in a particular building. Uh, I can see on a particular day how many seats I have available, uh, the occupancy, this is on a rolling uh, weekly average, uh, and I can see here how many seats uh, were used on that particular day uh, and what's been my overall occupancy uh, on those particular days. And I can see here which days of the week are generally busier than others, uh, I can even see down to the individual spaces, 
how much time this is occupied in a particular day, uh, or what's the average utilization in that room uh, at any particular time over the day. And I can see some of these rooms are generally only about a quarter of the occupancy or of the capacity of the room. Uh, so maybe these are rooms that we can start to redesign uh, because I'm not really filling up uh, the rooms or they're too big. And I can start to see that information uh, on a historical basis. So not only am I able to make real-time employee decisions, where should I sit? Uh, is this space available? Who's in there? I can start to see this from a historical perspective as well to understand what my employees are doing, uh, where they're going, what spaces they like to use, what spaces they don't like to use, et cetera. And then I can also tie in all of that building automation data as well that Metricus was talking about. This data can come from any number of sources and what ServiceNow can do is start to bring that in to help you visualize all of that, right? We're looking at these dashboards in ServiceNow where I've looked at data from across multiple different platforms. I'm seeing that in the context of my overall space management from an IWMS perspective, right? It's that same tool, it's the same location. Uh, it's what I'm familiar with. And now I can start to see that information. Uh, maybe we've got the temperature here. And if the temperature uh, goes above a certain amount or a certain uh, threshold in a particular room, we're going to kick that off to ServiceNow to take action. Again, ServiceNow being that system of action to now open up a ticket to our facilities team to go update or to go um, adjust the thermostat to uh, an appropriate level for this particular room. Uh, maybe noise, right? Maybe we're capturing noise levels in a particular spot. We saw that idea of I wanted to see uh, what's available space based on occupancy. Maybe I want to see available space based on noise. Uh, and so I know that I want to sit in a quieter area today, or I want to sit in a noisy area because I think that's going to be a little bit more collaborative. And that's what I'm looking for today. Uh, but now I can make seating decisions based on the noise uh, areas. Even things like pressure, uh, light percentage, humidity, CO2, et cetera. You can get very detailed uh, and granular with the different types of environmental data that you can pull in. Uh, and so now you can make those decisions. What we're seeing is uh, a lot of our customers are taking this data and understanding what their building is and actually using this in things like lease negotiations. So if you have very specific uh, environmental and ESG requirements that you want your uh, landlords to meet and that you're going to make your space occupancy decisions based on what they provide, here's where you can check them based on those sensors and understand what they're providing. Uh, use this for your executives to report back your overall uh, ESG um, initiatives that you're managing from within the company. So with that, I am going to stop uh, and pass it off back to Paulina here. I think we're at Q&A.